press the bell icon on youtube and don't miss another update now the world is not just different the very structure of the international order is undergoing a profound transformation american nationalism the rise of china the saga of brexit and the rebalancing of the global economy are often cited as the more dramatic examples of change in fact the phenomenon is far more pervasive than just these illustrations we have seen the return of old empires like russia iran or turkey the middle east is in ferment even by its exceptionally volatile standards the centrality of asean to asia is not what it used to be demographic and economic trends in africa are giving that continent a greater salience south america is again a battleground for ideas but we are also talking beyond geographies and orthodox politics what defines power and determines national standing is also no longer the same technology connectivity and trade are at the heart of new contestations in a more constrained and interdependent world competition has to be pursued by force more intelligently the global commons is also more in disputation as multilateralism weakens even climate change is a factor contributing to geopolitics amongst others by the opening of an arctic passage in short change is upon us as never before now if the landscape looks very different today so do india's partners the relevance of the us or china is far more than any time earlier the russian relationship has defied odds by remaining incredibly steady japan has become an important factor in our calculations the rediscovery of europe is again underway with france now as a critical strategic partner the gulf has been bridged in an extraordinarily effective manner asean has grown closer and australia's relevance is more apparent africa is today the focus of both development assistance and the opening of new embassies and as you would have noted from the un general assembly our outreach extends from south america and the caribbean to the south pacific and the baltics closer home there is an unprecedented investment in the neighborhood whose consequences are becoming apparent put together the scale and intensity of our global engagement would be difficult to recognize for someone dealing with it even a few years ago now if the issues and relationships are different so too is the argumentation so the first caution is to avoid obsessing about consistency because it makes little sense in such changing circumstances there's certainly a place for constants but not to the extent of elevating them to immutable concepts on the contrary it is only by recognizing change that we are in a position to exploit opportunities the purposeful pursuit of national interest in shifting global dynamics may not be easy but it must be done and the real obstacle to the rise of india is not any more the barriers of the world but the dogmas of delhi an ability to respond to a variety of situations is part of any nation's rise but most agents of change encounter the accumulated wisdom of the entrenched or the passionate argument argumentation of the polarized in india we also meet an obsession with words form and process are often deemed more important than outcomes fortunately this continuous politics is helpful today in challenging past practices and frozen narratives it does so taking into account the steady elements of any policy in india's case a persistent striving to expand space and options not an end in itself that that is meant to ensure greater prosperity at home peace on the borders protection of our people and enhancing influence abroad now obviously our national strategy to realize even the more constant goals cannot be static in an evolving world 
We know that well, having seen the world move from bipolarity to unipolarity and then to multipolarity. But changes in strategy also need to cater for greater capabilities, ambitions, and responsibilities. And most of all, for changed circumstances. In approaching such a world in transformation, we must recognize that assumptions need to be regularly revisited and calculations frequently revised. To do that, an accurate reading of recent history is essential. That exercise by itself can encourage appreciating the compulsions of responding to the environment rather than mechanically applying doctrines and concepts. Now, evidence strongly supports the view that India has advanced its interests effectively when it has made hard-headed assessments of contemporary geopolitics, and even more so when it did not hesitate to break with its past. The 1971 Bangladesh War, the 1992 economic and political repositioning, the 1998 nuclear tests, or the 2005 India-US nuclear deal are instructive examples. Indeed, it is only through a series of disruptions that India was able to bring about decisive shifts in its favor. In contrast, the pursuit of apparently consistent course, despite changing circumstances, often led us to lose the plot. This was the case with engaging China in the 1950s as part of a larger post-colonial front, even as political differences sharpened over a boundary dispute and a Tibet complication. The experience with Pakistan was similar, despite that country moving to greater reliance on terrorism. To some extent, this is a debate about realism and hard security. What it really suggests is the need for an unsentimental audit of Indian foreign policy. Mm -hmm.